Europe Si, senior. Continental, le magazine européen, tout de suite sur France 3. France 3 vous invite à une grande soirée de cinéma avec Nokia Océanique et sur France Supervision en son stéréo numérique. Couple Youpi cherche locataire chic. Vous n'aurez aucun problème. Madame est servie. Sadiquement servie par Michael Keaton. Ses vices compris. C'est pas moi qui faut embarquer Mélanie Griffiths vous ouvre fenêtre sur Pacifique. Mon Dieu, la nature peut être cruelle parfois. Un mini de John Schlesinger dont la vue peut provoquer des troubles graves. Fenêtre sur Pacifique, jeudi 20h50 sur France 3. Bonne nuit Quand le beau devient sublime. Dans la vie, il y a autre chose que ça. Il y a combien de temps que vous n'avez pas ressenti la force des éléments Beaux éléments. L'histoire de Babar par Jeanne Moreau et Jean-Marc Louisada. Le roi Babar et la reine céleste, heureux, rêvent à leur bonheur. L'histoire de Babar, le disque de Noël pour les petits et les grands. se sont réfugiés en France pour guérir. Lorsque les obus ont commencé à tomber sur le centre de la ville, ça me semble drôle. Enfants musulmans, serbes ou croates, France 3 leur donne la parole et l'image. Ils ont commencé à détruire une ville qui était la leur. Je ne sais pas pourquoi ils continuent à détruire Sarajevo comme si ce n'était pas leur ville. Ils ont des choses à vous montrer sur la folie des grands. Je suis resté vivant, les cinq continents, mardi 22h50 sur France 3. Bonsoir. Au sommaire de cet Eurojournal, la polémique russo-américaine sur l'élargissement de l'OTAN aux pays de l'Est. Les critiques lancées contre l'équipage de l'Aquile Lauro par les rescapés du naufrage du paquebot italien. Et enfin, l'interview d'une pop star britannique particulièrement allumée, Captain Sensible. Le parti travailliste relance la polémique sur l'avenir de la monarchie britannique. En proposant une refonte de cette institution sur le modèle scandinave, les travaillistes ont déclenché la colère du gouvernement conservateur. Et pourtant, l'opposition explique qu'elle ne veut pas, je cite, « bazarder » to scrap la monarchie, mais seulement la moderniser. Lui, par contre, ne changera jamais. Captain Sensible, l'un des chanteurs britanniques les plus excentriques, vient de sortir un nouveau disque. Et il ne lésine pas sur la promo. Vous allez l'entendre raconter une histoire de limo ou de limousine qui vaut très largement son pesant de cacahuètes. Sky News. From the Sky Satellite Network, this is Sky News. A right royal row is raging over the Labour Party's plans to slim down the monarchy. The Shadow Home Secretary Jack Straw wants a Scandinavian style setup, not quite so much pomp and definitely less circumstance, but that's brought a furious reaction from the government. Labour says it doesn't want to scrap the monarchy but modernise it, alongside other proposals for constitutional reform. And it claims not only public, but royal backing for its plans, pointing out that the Prince of Wales has let it be known that he wants a streamlined monarchy too. 
what we're talking about uh, and reflecting public opinion in so doing is I think very much in tune uh, with uh, what the royal family themselves uh, themselves uh, have anticipated. And after all, it was John Major um, who, as Prime Minister a few years ago, took the first steps to slimming down the monarchy by reforms to the civil list by which uh, members of the royal family are paid. Ministers believe there's political mileage for them from the future of the monarchy and of the United Kingdom. I think if you add that to the other elements in Labour's proposals to do with regional assemblies, transferring more power to Brussels, uh, changing the House of Lords, it will in effect be the breakup of the Britain we know. While all sides agree that the monarchy has to adapt to survive, the question is whether the pressure for change should come from within the royal family or from politicians outside. What's clear is that as the public debate over the future of the monarchy goes on, the issue will continue to provoke a political battle royal. Paul Bromley, Sky News. Redefining the role of the monarchy is something that has been in the minds of the royals themselves. The Queen's decision to pay income tax was followed by the announcement of the decommissioning of the Royal Yacht Britannia. And already the number of royals paid from the civil list has been reduced to three. The Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen Mother. The Prince of Wales' view is well documented. In his recent biography, he describes the monarchy as continually changing with the times, even if it isn't always as quickly as even he would like. The problem with the monarchy debate, and it's raised fairly regularly, is how far do you go? What our tell as the hangers-on could be, uh, you know, sorted down a bit, but uh, as regards the monarchy itself, I'd hate to see that go. Well, I agree with cutting it down a little small, but keep the monarchy. The hangers-on, I. But the Queen and that Prince Charles is all right, like, no? You may do a good job. Aye. Other foreign royals are often held up as an ideal, but the Scandinavians, for example, with a much smaller population, pay more per head for their royal family than we do. King Harold of Norway receives two million pounds a year and employs just 120 people. The aristocracy in Norway was abolished in the 19th century. King Carl Gustav of Sweden and his family are treated as normal citizens. They can even claim child benefit. And Queen Margaret of Denmark holds fortnightly audiences at her palace, offering advice to members of the public. But again, her country is much smaller, and none of the European royals carry out as many official engagements as the Queen and her direct family. Simon McCoy, Sky News. Well, the season of buying silly singles is here again. Yeah, it's enough. Silly. It's brilliant. <laughs> we can't see you yet, so shut up. Mr. Blobby's hit last year. Anything's possible. Captain Sensible, you heard in the wings there. We still can't see him because we haven't got a camera to look at him, but we will in just a moment. There son you of Blobby. Go. <laughs> He's oh, I am Mr. Son of Blobby, mate. Look, some fat old pig from the punk era. <laughs> oh, I'm no. back with a vengeance. Let's just look at the music, shall we? Your left leg in, your left leg out. Shake it all about You do the okey coke and you turn around That's what it's all about <laughs> How on earth did you get talked into doing something like that? Oh, crikey. Well, uh, when, I, when, I, when this bloke, uh, Sir Harry, um, I, was, uh, I was speaking to him on the phone, um, and I, I, just, I, I just said, look, my career's in the doldrums, nothing's happening for me at all. I'm, I'm releasing all these space concept albums that nobody wants to buy. What am I going to do, Harry? And he said, well, why did you do a version of the Hokey Cokey? I said, the Hokey Cokey? And I was absolutely furious that, you know, I could be insulted that way as a man of my sort of... I mean, I was serious... Caliber. I'm a serious artiste. I can see that with the way you're dressed, yeah. actually. Buy my record. Bip, bip. <laughs> I need the money. <laughs> Is that what it's all about? I mean, you can't be strapped for a few bob, can you, from being oh, with the damned? Well, I'm a bit skint, actually. I, did, I had me last it in 1985, you know. I, I, anyone would understand that, you know... Uh, oh, you know. do me a favour. You've got a limo. I mean, well, I've been...